Jerry Info, I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. The 4 p.m. news update. Uh, it's a Wednesday and you know it's time for the glass ceiling. How easy is it for a hospital to steal a newborn? I'm asking this because of a story that is coming out of Port Harcourt. A couple is accusing the hospital where the woman gave birth of stealing one of their babies. They insist she gave birth to twins. But that the hospital claimed there was only one baby. Now, this is a story that you need to hear for yourself. So for the next two hours, yes, two hours, that's what we're going to be talking about. Some stories are too big. They're just too big for one hour. So today we're combining the glass ceiling and the big hard fact. So let's jump right into it. As I said, the couple lives in Port Harcourt. Last week, they spoke to our sister station over there, Nigeria Info 92.3. They spoke on the morning crossfire about what they're going through. Tell us what happened. Why do you think you had two babies instead of one? All right, joining us to give us more into this story is Mrs. Caleb Kebby and her husband. Good morning, Mrs. Caleb. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. So, tell us what happened. Why do you think you had two babies instead of one that you got? Okay. Um, as a mother, anybody who has given birth before, uh -huh. Someone who has gotten pregnant before, mm -hmm. you will know the kind of, you know, the, 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 the kind of baby you're carrying, whether it's one or two. Okay. Yes. So I've had three deliveries before now. And each of them, I don't have any problem because they were all single babies. Then this last one, I noticed that I was having two different kicks. As though two babies were moving in my womb. Mm. So at that moment, I started complaining to my husband that I don't think this is one pregnancy. This is two pregnancies. That he started questioning me. I said, this is not my first time giving birth. I've carried this other three. They are single, I know. This one is two. I even showed him the position. One is under, one is by my side. They were kicking me. So... He now took me to that hospital. They now asked me to run a scan. So when the scan, a radiologist was going through me, checking me, she also was mentioning that she seen two. So my husband was like, he was surprised about it. That my wife has been mentioning this thing to me. That so it's true that she should check very well. And is her machine good? Is it very good? She said, yes, the machine is good. The machine even picked the EDD. Because I was telling him that the way this thing is doing me, I, can, I may give birth very soon. So the machine picked it and said my water level was also low. The lady checked it like up to three times mm. before we confirmed that it's true. So I wasn't surprised because I've been telling my husband that what I'm feeling in my womb is true. So that was it. We ran this, uh, the scan. And then I asked for the, the scan result, if we can wait for it. At that time, the lockdown, uh, there was a curfew around 8. Mm -hmm. When uh, Governor Wiki placed that curfew around 8. So yeah. Time was really fast and up against us. So I was asking if I can still wait to get the um, um, result. Yeah. She said no, because of the timing and the curfew that the following day because i was asked to come every day yeah. because of my bp so they were monitoring it so i was always coming every day to the hospital so the following day i came with my husband and before uh I had, the following day i came with my husband so the i was surprised they didn't give it to me i and they now told me it was in my folder i will see the doctor so when it got to our time to see the doctor i and my husband will enter the doctor's office it was from that scan result that he was using to review and talk to us. Mm. He, the first thing he told my husband is, uh, he questioned him that, Oga, do you know that your wife is carrying multiple pregnancies? My husband said yes, that 
even the radiologist has said so. Okay. So after then, they checked me. The, 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 there's a female doctor that is assisting him. She checked me and found out that that same position, I was telling my husband, those babies were. Yeah. She found out the same position and uh, listening to their heartbeats. With that heartbeat device, they used to listen to baby mm. cells, yeah. which I'm conversant with because it's not my first time giving birth. Yeah. And that, had, that um, device was so clear, I could also hear the heartbeat. So she now called in the doctor. I said, look at you, I'm having, I'm getting two heartbeats. The man checked me and everything was okay. So I'm I, I, on the day of the, he now said, okay, that my husband told my husband, he said, I cannot give birth normally. My husband said, why? He said, because they are true. That two is they don't usually give birth to them normally. They don't usually? Yes. That's what the doctor said? Yes. That um, you, you have to do it through CS. Hmm. So he said, okay. He now placed us um, for the CS. Because we, we trust him as a, a doctor. Hmm. He said, okay, we agreed. He even mentioned the birth weights of these babies. Each of them were 2.6. So my husband and they are too small. The weight is too small. He say yes, two is they don't, they are not always big. Uh, from two point five, two point six, and so on. You know. So we said okay. Then um, we said okay, we are going to. He said we should go and prepare ourselves and come back for the operation. Another thing that he did, he even demonstrated how the positions of these babies were. So I said okay. He said one was breached. The other one was uh, uh, one was breached. The other one was sitting with the butters. Yeah. And that I cannot cannot expect a, a pregnant woman to push out a baby with butters. is suicidal. When they did the delivery mm. in the theater, I was in the premises. Yeah, but you were not in the theater. I was not inside the theater. Yeah. So at the point, they said, "Call the husband. Let him come and see you." Okay. So I asked them, is there any problem? They said, no, there's no problem, but I should just come. So I followed the nurse. Mm. I, they opened the door, but they didn't allow me to go in before now. Mm. I went in. They were done at the time? They were done. Okay. So I went in, I got kitted. Uh, after getting kitted, they now took me into the main theater. Mm. So there was a door. And there were other rooms okay, before, before the main before the theater. theater. Okay. So when I got into the main theater, the doctor now told me, uh, Oga, uh, the scan says it's two, but uh, this is practical. It's one. Okay. He, he said it like two, three times. I was just looking at him that uh, should I go ahead with the other procedure? With the other procedure. I said, we've agreed on this. Go ahead. At that point, I was seeing my wife open before them i wanted them to be yeah. to be done, be done with, with taking yeah. care of her i mm -hmm. don't want anything to happen to her so i just kept quiet and i told them ah, go ahead now we've mm -hmm. agreed on this thing so when i came out of the theater room there was another room this way yeah so i went into that room that was where i saw the baby already dressed and was on oxygen so i said ah why is this baby on oxygen they said uh, they had to take away some fluids and all that, and he was uh, grunting, so they had to take care of him that way. Uh, let's monitor him whether it will be okay. Mm -hmm. I now asked, why are they saying he's one? But initially, we're expecting twins. Mm. The nurse at that point, I think the matron, at that point couldn't give me, she just kept quiet mm. and was saying he's one, he's one. So I didn't want to go into any argument at that point. So I left. That was how I stayed with the baby until towards evening. When they now told me that they couldn't uh, cope at that material time, that they were advised that uh, I go to Omega Children Hospital, a specialist pediatric hospital where the baby can be given intensive care. So, Mr. Caleb, what have you done since this uh, happened to try to get the baby back? Okay, um, this is what I did. Immediately, uh, the baby was uh, discharged from Omega. I took the baby to the mother mm. in, the, in the clinic. 
Now, at that point, it was already past six days from delivery. Okay. Remember that the reason why the baby was taken there was for intensive care and yeah. all that. So I was monitoring the baby while the mother was on the other side. Mm. So when I came, I now asked, where is the scan result that I told you guys to give to my wife? Mm. Because she has been demanding for it. And I also, I was shocked. It wasn't even with her initially. So I was like, ah, give it to her now. If you know that you guys are not playing pranks, mm. it's a very simple thing. You've spoken to me as a man. The doctor spoke to me as a man and i listened to him and i said if you guys are not playing any pranks why not give this woman the scan result and then if there is any technical or whatever you want to ex technical details you want to give why it was only one baby and not two then you can tell her before her face they neglected all those things so at that point when i came and she saw that i was with the baby how did they neglect they literally tell you they were not going to give you or they pretended uh, not to hear you what what was the form of um neglect who will handle it who will handle it don't worry i will take care of it that was what he said mm. i will take care of it okay and for all the period i waited it was never taken care of when I, there was, at a point i came to the hospital because i monitor as well while i crisscross both clinics yeah at the point she told me the the was it the assistant doctor at the point said they're not giving them that scan result i just kept quiet you know i still told her be calm you are still in this hospital they are the ones taking care of you mm. and under this situation please i don't want any fight i on i knew what i was doing mm. so when i now came down fully i now asked the doctor where is this scan result the doctor didn't answer me. I now went to the assistant. I said, where is the scan result? The assistant didn't answer me. That uh, am I the one that keeps scan results and all that? I said, ah, but is, is this not something that is with you guys? The guy said he's in a folder. I went to meet the admin. The admin said uh, uh, he's, not with her. he's not with them. So I was now going from table to table. They were yeah. just turning me around. So it was at that point my wife called one of my brothers, okay. who happens to be a police officer. I was still, I was wrong with these guys. So it was the, that one in Lagos that now took the number of the doctor and called him okay. and asked him, why are you denying these people their scan results? They've been demanding for this thing and you have refused to give it to them. Can give I, it to them. Can I call me? Yes, please, madam. There was one of uh, the student nurse who used to attend to me, bringing drugs to me. Mm. I asked her, please, I stylishly asked her because I try my best to make myself friendly with them because mm. they are taking care of me. Yeah. So I asked her about the scan results, if it was in my folder. She went and checked and said, they have removed it. They have removed it? Yes. She said that, that is to you. not there, yes. Hmm. Let, uh, okay, let me continue. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. So now, at that point, when he demanded for the doctor to produce that scan result, the doctor now said, uh, told me that you went and called a, a faceless police officer, called him and was asking for a scan result. I said, yes, the doctor's wife was there because it was inside their office. Yeah. I said, yes. He called you and I've been asking for this. The wife now said uh, a police officer in Lagos has no jurisdiction <laughs> to demand for scan results. When I heard that, I'm not, Ill, I'm not an illiterate. I'm educated. So immediately I heard that word. I said, ah, this thing is serious. That means these people are not ready to produce this thing. Immediately, I went to the nearest police station, which is Rumukbakani Divisional Police Station. Okay. When I reported there, I told them exactly what happened and what my demands were at that material time. That I was demanding for the scan result. Mm. And this is what happened. And this is the reason why I'm demanding for the result. When I went there that day, mm. there were some murmurs that, ah, this hospital again. Maybe we've had uh, an issue with this hospital before. For sure, of three places. So they they kept quiet. That yeah. was in the passing. I heard that. Mm -hmm. Said, okay, don't worry, let's go. 
they followed me down there and requested that the hospital the doctor and they should come for questioning okay so when they went i wasn't with them but the police officers now called me and told me that yes the doctor has reported and they have collected the scan result from the doctor they gave them the scan result i now asked i said that scan result that they gave to you guys what is in it is it a twin gestation the police confirmed yes what is in the scan result is a twin gestation at that moment i now kept quiet i said okay no fine no problem they now told me when i should come back to the police for us to have a meeting okay at that point i now called in a lawyer i said please come mm. this is what is happening uh, i need you to come in and do your professional work mm. so he said okay the day we are going to the police station for further discussions yeah. that will be there with me he was actually there with me and when he saw everything that was happening he was like we need to move this case out of this place so One one two nine two four six. If you use a nine mobile line, one six zero four six nine three two one one two nine two four six. The second one thousand error pin is four nine six seven two one. Seven three nine six six nine zero five three again four nine six seven two one seven three nine six six nine zero five three. I have a final one thousand hour recharge pin for somebody who uses nine mobile. Just so that uh, it's easier for you to call Nigeria in full cutsy Nine Mobile. Thank you so much, Nine Mobile, for this, uh, for these uh, recharge pins. Nine four four two zero seven three one five four nine one five eight eight. Again, nine four four two zero. Seven three one five four nine one five eight eight. Now I have uh, one two three four five six. I have six five hundred naira uh, nine mobile recharge to give away. I'll also be giving it away to the fastest fingers on the show today. So um, if you did not get the one thousand naira cards, look out for the five hundred naira cards. And if you are the one who won the one thousand naira cards, tweet at us at Nigeria Info FM or send uh, proof to us via whatsapp all right just send a whatsapp to me tell me telling me that you won and congratulations in advance to everybody else but yes back to our story what do you think about this couple's ordeal what do you think about the accusations that they are making you've heard what they say uh happened when they came for scans during the pregnancy you've also heard what the husband says uh happened during the surgery what do you think happened don't forget, I said we're going to be talking to a doctor on the show in a few minutes. We'll also be talking to the couple themselves to find out um, about any updates uh, that exist as far as this story is concerned. But let me hear from those of you who have interfaced with the pregnancy and childbirth process here in Nigeria. So for those of you who are mothers, uh, husbands of mothers, doctors, midwives, nurses, radiologists, all of you, call me, talk to me. What do you think happened here? 0700-993-993-993. This is the Glass Ceiling, the glass ceiling. on Hard Facts. Hard facts.
is the glass ceiling, the glass ceiling. on hard facts. Hard facts. What do you think about this couple who shared their story with our sister station in Port Harcourt? Ah, what do you think about the accusations that they are making? You've heard what they say uh, happened when they came for scans during the pregnancy. You've heard what the husband says happened during the surgery. What do you think happened? If you are a doctor or a midwife or a nurse or a radiologist, those of you who interface with the pregnancy and childbirth process in Nigeria, moms, husbands of moms, I want to hear from you. Let's talk, huh? 0700-993-993-993. We're still going to talk to a doctor on the show in a few minutes, but let's talk to Ebeniza in Akoka right now. Hello, Ebeniza. Ebeniza, hello. 99.3. Hello. How are you? What's your name? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name? My name is Chris. Chris, good to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Sandra, my dear sister, honestly speaking, uh, I mean, uh, let me actually say this. I mean, uh, I think uh, last, uh, precisely, last uh, last two months, yes, July 10th, to be precise, uh, my twin sister delivered of a baby boy. I mean, I went to the hospital. Hmm. It was more, almost the, the same case of this nature. Because, I mean, uh, I mean, I was in my office when the husband called me. So I quickly ran to the hospital. You know, when I came there, I mean, uh, you, 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 I came to me to the office of the, I mean, uh, I think the receptionist. All of them were just, I mean, so arrogant in that, in the attitude. I mean, none of them was ready to answer any question I'm posing to them. Even in the end, okay, when they, they finally delivered the baby, okay, I went to, okay, I said, okay, fine. Can we, now I and the husband, I said, okay, can we go and see? Can I see the baby? In fact, it took. I mean, I, I have to shout and shout, you know. I, I, they want me to create unnecessary scene that is not part of me before they, I was able to, I was allowed to see the baby. So what I want to say in this, honestly speaking, for me, I, I somehow, I partially believe what the man is saying because that was what I witnessed that very day, you know. There is this negligence of attitude of doctors when it comes to, to that particular stage of, uh, when once there is a cesarean section in the hospital. That is always what happened. Also, you know, I think uh, I, in this part of the world, I can't really say, but uh, I'm too sure that uh, I haven't heard of this, that a, a, a scam can actually lie. You know, I haven't heard of that. Yeah, even my own mom, before he, she delivered uh, my sister and I, and I, I remember, she do tell me that. I mean, they conduct the scan, and the scan proved that uh, she has, I mean, twin. And at the end of the day, we are delivered of twins. So I don't think, I mean, uh, it is very, I think something is fishing. Uh, they just need to, I mean, uh, put more pressure, probably, I mean, uh, in the end of it, I wish them good luck. I mean, the truth will surely surface. All right. Thank you for calling us. Askia is in Surulere. Hello, Askia. Welcome. Oh. Askia, hello. You're live on the show. You're talking to Sandra now. How are you? <laughs> hello? My name is Askia. Askia. <laughs> Thanks for calling. Good evening. Yeah, yeah fine. So now, sorry to you call me Askia. Hello? Hello? I mean, um, as I was saying. Hello? Okay, then. Sorry about that. Uh, if you can call us back, uh, do go ahead and call us back. Hello? Hello, Sandra. Good evening. Good evening. Hmm. I want to remain anonymous. I'm a doctor. Okay, welcome. Yes. Uh, I think it would be nice hmm. to hear from the doctor, the hostel first. Unfortunately, I think they are refusing to... To comment. To the call the, yes. yes, they're to refusing comment to it. comment, yes. Uh, I, I think if that scan report, like those patients claim mm. that it's positive is there, mm. it's actually wrong for the hospital to refuse to hand over, in fact, it's even criminal to hand over a patient report results to another person. Mm. The woman was supposed to be given that scan report she paid for. Mm. That report was not supposed to be handed over to the police. Okay. That's even wrong in the first place. I see. Okay. I see. So the, they, don't, they, they owe the patient an explanation to what happened in that case. Hmm. They should, in fact, they should be honest enough with themselves. They should hand over that child because I'm very sure if that kind of result had shown that uh, 
the, the pregnancy was twin, mm. they should just better hand over the woman's child to the to the parents. I don't I don't I don't understand this the story. That's why I said it would be nice to listen to them. Mm. But I at least ask them some questions. Mm-hmm. This is foolish. Ah, Sandra is very sad. Thank you for calling us, Dr. Anonymous. We've got Bankole in Ikotu on the line. Hello, Bankole. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, thanks to um, your station and thanks to Naimo by one, one of the recharge cars you call online. Oh, congratulations. Naira. And thank you for calling yeah, me with it. <laughs> that was why I'm calling right oh, now. Oh. I have a lot of credit on my phone to call. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. We're getting the... Um, the, the story. Bed, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think there is a lot. This thing is really, really clear that there's a lot of thing involved because I see no reason why um, the hospital refused to give a patient the uh, the result, the scan result. So that alone has really speak a lot that there's something really, really fishy about it because I pay for the uh, scan result is not free. So she paid for it, and I think it's it's a right for her to demand for the result, and it should be given to her. Hmm. So I see no reason why the result hasn't been given to her and be given to the police. So that alone, that alone, I think uh, the couples are right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Bankole, for calling, and congratulations again on winning that recharge uh, pin. What are the odds that you won? And then you called me. Now, you see, this story, eh, <clears throat> it raises a lot of questions, right? But one big question is, is it possible for a scan at 36 weeks to show twins when there is really only one baby? Is it possible for a scan at 36 weeks to show twins when there's really only one baby? And only an expert can answer that question. So joining me now is uh, Dr. Kunle Fatai Ajayi, a consultant, obstetrician, and gynecologist. Dr. Ajayi, when examining a pregnant woman by ultrasound, what are the signs that indicate that she's carrying twins or carrying a multiple pregnancy? Uh, Thank you for uh, having me, and uh, thanks for your question. Usually, it's best to diagnose twin pregnancy or other multiples very early in pregnancy. So I'm talking to her as early as six, seven weeks. So that's where you're able to see the number of gestational sacs and um, if possible, the, the, the kind of membrane separating them will also tell you what kind of twins you're carrying. So, I mean, it's best diagnosed early in pregnancy. You know, by the time pregnancy is advanced, you know, it's a bit more difficult. Hmm. Still, I mean, if you have a good scan machine and uh, with the requisite skills, you should be able to diagnose during pregnancy or uh, other multiples without any problem. I see. But are there any yeah. signs that indicate that uh, the woman is carrying twins or multiple yeah, I mean, pregnancy? Not all sound is clear. Okay. Well, for example, if you are carrying twins and uh, we scan you early in pregnancy, we should be able to see two sacs. Oh. Yeah, so and as the pregnancy advances, you'll be able to make out all the other things that are supposed to be in the sac. You know, the yolk sac, the fetal pole, the heartbeat. So as, as early as six, seven weeks, the diagnosis can be made. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, um, with the case you mentioned, I mean, if scan was done early in pregnancy and uh, the demise of one of the twins. Um, later, I mean, if you do a scan later, you might find that, the, that one of the sacs is missing, or one of the stories is missing, something called the vanishing twin, mm. you know, syndrome. Mm. Yeah, so, I mean, but that would have been diagnosed even before delivery. <laughs> so by the time I, 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 I do it, I'm doing this scan at about six, seven weeks, and I know she's carrying twins. Mm-hmm. So the other scan is about 20 weeks, so something like an anomaly scan, to mm-hmm. look at the baby from head to toe. If I don't find a second twin, apparently one of them has disappeared. And that concept is well known, called vanishing twin syndrome. It's well known. Vanishing twin syndrome. Oh, yes, interesting. Yes. Now, um... It may not be this one you've talked about, mm-hmm. but 
that is a known concept. I see, I see. Now, uh, let me ask another question. When the doctors or the radiologists or the other professionals uh, believe that a woman is carrying twins, what do they do to confirm it? Uh, well, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's basically by scanning. There's no other way of, um, well, clinically, you could you know, that failed multiple facial parts, you know. Uh, so that, that was sort of into you towards the possibility of, you know, more than one fetus. But, I mean, the scan will come sort of confirm whatever it is you are, uh, you are feeling. Mm. And you can tell the client that, look, looks like this is more than one fetus. Mm. Uh, you manage appropriately. Hmm. Now, how often does it happen, Dr. Jai, or how likely is it to happen that after all the scans have shown twins, have shown that one baby was breached, the other one was bottom down, has shown the expected due date, has shown the weight of the babies, uh, and of course you have um, um, the OBGYN saying throughout the pregnancy that you're going to have twins, for the woman to end up on the delivery table, and they find only one child. No, no dead second baby. No dead second baby. Just a single birth. How often does that happen? How likely is that to happen? It's very unlikely. It's very, very unlikely. Except, I mean, if they just accepted whatever it was the radiologist was giving them, hook, line, and sinker. Mm. So you can imagine uh, somebody not not very skilled sending you a report and saying it's twins and then you accept it as a gynecologist. Mm. You know? Um, but, I mean, a skilled radiologist should be able to tell you how many fetuses are in the abdomen. And it's a high, very, very high level of certainty. And it's, 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 it's that advanced mm. and they're telling you that one is bridge, one is cephalic. I mean, what, what, <laughs> could the person have been uh, lying or could they have been imagine that there was another baby because it's not possible to see two and then deliver I mean, deliver the baby only to find one mm. it's, it's highly except if the person that was scanning mm. was the same person that has been scanning from early pregnancy mm-hmm. and they desire to be doing copy and paste ah uh. Yeah, but I, mean, I, 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 I don't want to go into that. Mm-hmm, I mean, mm-hmm. that. Because if you have the consulting, the consulting uh, uh, doctor saying to yeah. them, "Oh, you know that you are carrying twins, right? Okay, um, yeah. because you're carrying twins, and because of where they are, the way they are placed, we're not going to be able to do normal delivery. We're going to have to um, do a cesarean to get the babies out. But when they yeah. opened up, the doctor comes out and says to the husband, "Oh, there's only one in the, you know, scan." Is theory, but this one is practical. Should I go ahead? He said, "Yes, go ahead." <laughs> they goofed. That's the bottom line. They just, they probably just accepted the report from any from wherever the scan was um, the scan um, was carried out, mm. and probably just decided to go with it. Okay. As a guy, the guidance of attention, you should also you know, do your clinical. Assessment, and if you do that, there are ways of finding out really whether there's really two or just one. There have been instances where you know they will tell you you are carrying sleep light and it turns out to be twins you mm. know, because if they actually do it late in pregnancy, they can late in pregnancy, mm-hmm. the limbs are both angle that you might think you are seeing three instead of two. But I mean, the skills do not, not just should be able to see that. Mm. Twins, it's very, very rare to make such a mistake because I mean, they are twins now, so you don't see two heads mm-hmm. lying in two positions. Mm-hmm. Um, and the head is it has a good it has a characteristic to it, you cannot see a fibroid and quality head. Mm-hmm. They also and heard they, two heartbeats, yeah. They heard two heartbeats, mm-hmm. and um, it, it's very, very unlikely. All right, but not having said that, it could just be a mistake on the part of the radiologist, anything is possible, and then the, the, the delivering team just took the results, you know, in all in good faith. Mm. There to go ahead. Okay. That's that's why sometimes we allow parents to come into the the, 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 the theater, theater. Mm. and they come so that they see what they're doing. Mm. It's always better for for transparency. Mm. You know, but if, if the father had been there, for example, while delivery was being conducted, mm. and only one baby came, there's no way we'll come back to stay. You know. 
that it was true and probably one got taken away to another place. Mm. So those are some of the ways we can mitigate you know, such risks. Mm. Dr. Ajayi, thank you so much for talking to us on Hard Facts. You're welcome. Dr. Ajayi, of course, is a, a consultant, obstetrician, and gynecologist. So, you've heard from an independent expert, Lagos. The hospital is not talking to us, and now I want to hear from you. How do you judge this matter so far? Who do you think is telling the truth? Who do you think is lying? If you think the hospital is lying, what do you think the motive is? If you think the couple is lying... What do you think their aim is? This story has been getting a lot of attention ever since our Port Harcourt station covered it, covered it last week. So we're going to be taking a, a look at any updates surrounding this story. I will be talking to the couple in a few minutes, uh, between 5 and 6 actually. But for now, let's take your calls. 700 993 993 WhatsApp is available. WhatsApp 080 Nine five nine seven five eight zero five. The women, you are allowed to call me on WhatsApp. All right, if you are trying the phone lines and it's not easy to get through, women only call me by WhatsApp. WhatsApp oh eight oh nine five nine seven five eight zero five. I hope you do though have a um, very strong internet connection. Okay, we've got uh, Askia calling back. Hello. Yes, hello. Hi. Sorry, my line is connected. And anyway, I just want to say this very quickly. Um, if they don't have anything to hide the hospital, why can't they produce the scan results? Hmm. Because I've taken scan in an hospital and a friend of my son uh, 11 years ago, and I did ask for the scan results, and it was given to me. And I, there was even a case that there was a one mother, because um, we shared a room, and she had some complications. So hmm. they asked for the scan results, and they handed it over. So hmm. it, it's very fishy. And I, I and it's, it's it's too suspicious not to have so many thoughts going on in one's mind. Mm. Why is the question is why is the hospital not producing this kind of result? Mm. And, and 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 for them to 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 actually you know be this stubborn and and they are not producing it, then there's something on. So I feel if they really have to to investigate this, maybe they need to close down the hospital. Maybe they need to call them in for question. Maybe they need to see their license until they produce this kind of result because. It's wrong. I mean, as a mother, you would be, you would even feel traumatized. Mm. So I know that there can be some certain mistakes so that you might think you have a twin or mm. sometimes the scan results might actually, uh, I've had cases in the past that by scan results could actually make mistakes mm. when it comes to the sex of some certain babies. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, might, you might end up seeing it picking the girl, then mm. by the time you put it there, it's a boy. Mm. I've had of cases like that. But if they, if they have nothing to hide, mm. just produce the scan results. That oh. is it. That That's is it. Producer scan results. Aoudi, Aoudou Saliu in Obanikoro. Hello. Good evening, Aoudou. Yes. Zandra. How Good are afternoon. you? Good afternoon. Yeah, this is Aoudou Saliu, your Ghanaian brother. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. You yes. see, they're stolen the baby because there was a time in Ifako Bagada. Mm. I just don't want to mention the name of the hospital. Okay. They were used of doing that. If your wife gave birth, they were said, either the child is there, they were exchanged the child. Hmm. And so the other one. It's a very popular hospital in Fakobagada. Hmm. I just don't want to mention the name. Okay. 90, 90, 98, 99, they did it to my, my friend, very good friend. Ah, we saw this baby cry. But later they said, uh, Oh, God, we are sorry, your baby is dead. Ah. Yeah, and it's like it was something that was, they do a lot in that particular hospital. Okay. So it's like the guy should not leave them at all. They should take up that matter seriously. Hmm. You see, some hospitals do that a lot. They will, either they exchange the child or they will sell their child to you know, one big man like that, something like that. But it happened a lot. It happened. I know what happened in 1997, 1998. I know very well in Fakobagada. It happened to my friend. I just don't want to mention the name of the hospital. Very popular hospital in Fakobagada here. Hmm. Good evening. Good evening, Audu uh, Saliu. Thanks for calling us. We've got a message here on WhatsApp. Uh, Sandra, good evening. When you are pregnant uh, with twins, you will know because the movement of one is different from two, even when you don't go for scan. I am a mother of twins. It is painful. CJ from Ojo says on WhatsApp. We've got somebody who's calling us here. Hello. Good evening. You need to turn your radio off. 
Go ahead. Hello. Yes. Am I good to go? You're good to go. Go ahead. Yeah, my name is um, Mrs. Chuku from Lagos. Welcome, Mrs. Chuku. Hello? Yes, welcome. Go ahead. Yeah, I have listened to your story and there is quite interesting and sympathetic what i just want to say is this there are two things involved hmm. i am a mother mm -hmm. and like, like what the couple said the woman said there's no how you'll be pregnant for one you won't know not to talk of two then secondly from the scan it was shown that he has multiple pregnancy then at the end of the day there was a prank and you know all that so i want to believe that two things are involved it's either they have sold the child to one rich man or or they have taken one of the twin child for a ritual so as such the couple should not take it easy because a lot of things are happening so they should hold them very well let them produce their remaining baby and i want to believe all the from the beginning of the scan they have planned everything and that was why they suggested for ca when a woman is going for CS, she wouldn't know what is happening around her. If it were to be a normal delivery, she would be able to know, yes, one has come out. Well, unfortunately, Mrs. Chuku's connection isn't uh, very clear, but I thank you for calling us, Mrs. Chuku. We've got uh, Ajoke who says, it is wrong for the hospital not to produce the scan results. The hospital must be investigated. Nigeria Info, look, for this hospital to deny this couple the scan result, it's proof that there's something hidden under the carpet. I advise that they should hand over the couple's child to them in peace. I can see confidence in the couple's speech, Moses Inikoyi said. We have another woman on the phone. Hello. 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 Good evening. Good evening. Yes, my name is Edna from Ikorodu. Welcome, Edna. Go ahead. All right. Thank you very much. From what I have heard, this story is so pathetic and really, really annoying. The hospital, they know what they are doing. For a mother to put to bed, and even in the midst of CS, I had CS when I had my child, and I knew what it is for a woman to have CS. And even at that, she hadn't even recovered, and she's demanding for her scan result, and they refused. That means something deeply is fishing, and they should follow it up. I, I, I schooled in Port Harcourt, so I know what happens around. Hmm. That child might have been sold or used for something. They should follow it up, and they should produce that child by all means. And if, if, if anything happened to that child, that hospital should be closed down. I think that's my thoughts. Thank you very much. Thank you for calling to share it with us. All right, let's come back to uh, regular phone lines now, where a lot of people are itching to get in on the show. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name? My name is Ayodeji. I'm calling from Shagam. Ayodeji, welcome. Thank you. Can I also talk about your previous uh, story? What previous story? The price of corn that has gone up, the issue and... No, we've moved away from that since. Hello, Sandra. I'm a health professional. That hospital should be accountable. The case is just practically not possible. I pray they get justice. President Sandra, I go kill person. They have sold the baby. I have never heard of this. They must produce the baby and the buyer, even if they are in Jupiter. Ihangi Obata in Surulere says. Um, good afternoon, Sandra. My name is Ezine. Like the last caller said, the child has been stolen and sold out to a prominent person. When I gave birth to my child, I knew when the child and number of children pulled out of me. From the scan it showed its twins. It's not possible for the scan to lie, but sex can lie. So there should be thorough investigation and if possible sue the hospital. But we heard from a, a doctor that actually told us um, that uh, it's possible for a scan to pick up um, the wrong number of children. So for instance, you may have uh, twins and the scan will be showing triplets. It, it's been known to happen, right? Uh, we have a man calling on WhatsApp. I'm going to block you. If you're a man and you call me on WhatsApp, I'll block you. So that means you can't even send us messages via WhatsApp anymore. Only women can call me on WhatsApp. Chibas and Ikeja, hello. Good, afternoon. Good evening. Good Sandra. evening. How are you? God bless you. I'm okay. And you? I'm very well. You've got two minutes. Yes. Um, there is no need to overflow this issue. 
we should base this argument on empirical evidence. Mm -hmm. There was um, a scan. Mm -hmm. Now, the parents, when the scan was done, was a copy of that scan given to the parents. They said no. If the parents, if the, the man and the woman, if they have any copy of the scan, mm. they should produce it. Uh, if this thing, if this case goes to court, experts will be called upon to look at the scan as evidence at the surface. There is no how about three, four, five um, experts from Nigeria, even from abroad, mm. cannot interpret what is empirical. Mm. They must interpret it and they will tell us exactly what happened. Mm. For me, the, the doctor could be... Why I think that why the doctors don't want to talk is probably their, doc, their lawyers are not around. Okay. They don't want to make any statements that rope them in. Okay. I think, yes, or... Probably the, the head consultant has not given them the permission to talk to any person. At the right time, they will, they, they, they will make themselves available, whether they like it or not. And like the expert that spoke, uh, the, the doctor you called said, mm -hmm. scan can pick anything. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's scan most of times have proved to be false. You know, so for me, mm. let the empirical evidence show us what is happening in this thing. The parents should produce their own copy of the scan if they have it, mm -hmm. and the hospital should also produce their own copy of the, 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 the scan. This thing is not an emotional something. More than they can, because they get pregnant, they carry children, they can say anything. Mm. But I think the best thing is for experts to tell us the right thing happening. Thank you. Thank you, Chibweza, for calling us. Lagos, let's take a break. We've got headlines coming your way at uh, the top of the hour, and then we're going to get in touch with a couple. Yes, we'll be calling Mr. and Mrs. Caleb uh, Karuna, and uh, they'll talk to us about uh, any latest developments in their own particular story. I am Sandra Ezekwesili. Don't go away. Hard, hard facts. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Hard Facts with Sandra Ezekwisi. All right, before the news comes, let me share the last of the recharge pins to nine mobile users. Nine Mobile loves that you call Nigeria Info, and Nine Mobile wants you to continue to call Nigeria Info, and so they're giving out a bunch of recharge cards. This one is 500 naira. The next uh, bunch of cards I'll be announcing, 500 naira. 
0448. Don't forget, if you win, send us a message or give us a call and tell us that you won. I also have 6341290347 And the final one I'll call and after the news I'll call another one is 2967448 Three six eight one seven six six. So two nine six seven four four eight eight three six eight one seven six six. That's a five hundred naira recharge card. Cutsy nine mobile. Yvonne is here for the news. It's five o'clock. The headline news on 99.3 Nigeria Info. In the headlines on 99.3 Nigeria Info, Nigerians set to pay more for petrol as PPMC announces increase to 151 naira. Two die in Lagos following accidents involving four cars. Lagos State insists the controversial 20 Naira Commission levied on e-hailing companies will not be paid by the drivers. Also, Governor Babajide Sonwulu wants the Murtala Mohammed International Airport to serve as a commercial hub for West Africa. Nigerian traders in Ghana set for respite as House of Reps Speaker arrives Ghana ahead of talks to resolve crisis. The Christian Association of Nigeria officially writes President Muhammad Buhari to suspend the implementation of the Companies and Allied Matters Act. In business, the newly signed Lagos Land Use Charge is set. The Land Use Act is set to help Lagosians in the agricultural sector. In entertainment, State Security Service denies inviting Don Jazzy and Tiwa Savage for questioning. On the foreign scene, 14 people are on trial in Paris for the attack on a satirical magazine. And in sports, three PSG players test positive for COVID-19. Stay tuned for the comprehensive news updates at 6 p.m. In the meantime, it's the sunny... Pardon me there. It is hard facts. <laughs> so it's Sandra who's literally laughing at me right yes, now. Yes, of course. By the way, you, when you, you, say, you can listen to the sunny side. <laughs> you can, yes. But when you say it over and over again, sometimes you get these things jumbled it up. Just, it just stays with anyway, you. Anyway, it is hard facts with Sandra. Yes, indeed. Yvonne took us around the world in uh, two minutes and brought us back to what she thought was sunny side. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really just hard facts. If you've been here with us since four, you've been hearing us talk about a couple uh, who um, had a baby in Port Harcourt. They claim that the hospital where they had that baby stole one of their babies. They insist that they had twins, uh, but the hospital claims that it was just one baby. And that's a story we've been talking about f since four. Now, you heard from uh, the interview they granted um, our sister station in Port Harcourt. If you're ever in Port Harcourt, listen to Nigeria Info there, 92.3. So you, l you heard the interview they granted the morning crossfire there in Port Harcourt. And you also heard me talk to uh, Dr. Kunle Fatai Ajayi, who is a consultant gynecologist. And he gave us his expert opinion on what he thought was going on. Now, let's talk to the couple themselves. This story has been getting a lot of attention uh, since our Port Harcourt station covered it last week. A lot of people want to know if there are any new developments. And I'm sure that even you, as you're listening, say, if you're like, okay, waiting don't happen since that time. Waiting with the update since that time. How far? Waiting they happen now. So let's hear from the Karumas again. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. First of all, before I go forward, let me say that I'm very sorry that you're dealing with this. Uh, madam, can you tell me what exactly you went through in the theatre? Okay, in the, in the theatre, mm. I'm going to 
Mm. My husband wasn't around when he came to take me. Mm. So I asked for him, he said that he was not around. Mm. I was waiting for him, so they took me in. When I go there, the he and I state the man that gives a uh, injection at the back. Mm. He was going to um, lie down while he took that injection. Mm. He's going to do a painless uh, operation. Mm -hmm. I'll carry that on me. I said, okay, because this is not the first uh, operation I've done. Okay. I the, my, my, my third child. Mm. I did do operation. So I like him, but I within me, I found that lying down. Uh, he's looking somehow because whenever you go into uh, a theater for cesarean operation, they will tell you to sit down. You will hold the pillow mm. for, for, for more than two. I conversed with it. Okay. So but I just obeyed. I lie down. They, they, they started the process. Mm. This man kept controlling me. Said he was looking for bone marrow, and my, my bone marrow is very far. Okay. And I am a plumpy person. Okay. And then I said, I have been a plumpy person, so, and I, I, I am plumpy. I did my um, third uh, operation before this one. Hmm. The third, my, my third son operation. Hmm. So, but I just obeyed. Kept saying, looking for bone marrow. I said, ah, he didn't need. And it's so painful. Yeah. You are not supposed to shake when yeah. this process yes. is going on. Yes. 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 So I just stayed there and tried to endure the pain. At a point, we went for my needle back. In fact, at a point, they told me to sit down and hold the pillow. Uh. After punching me and torturing me, saying that they were looking for bone marrow, and this thing was so painful. Yes. I sat down and just hugged the pillow. Mm. They kept controlling me. From the mid to center of my back, they went to the lower part of my back. They was still controlling me. At a point, I started feeling pain on my left leg. I know they were piercing me. So I started calling the name of Jesus. I go, help me. And they will see this bone marrow. So at a point, said they have found it. That was how they administered the injection. Mm. And because I was so exhausted, mm -hmm. I was only losing breath. Because of too much pain. Yes. I fell, fell out. They caught me and lied me well. I was looking at, I do I'm even passing out. But he told me that, uh, he asked me if, what kind of injection in anesthesia do, do I want? Do I want the one that will keep me awake or the one that will keep me sleeping? I said, no, I want the one that will keep me awake. Okay. So I was asleep and I noticed everything they were doing. Okay. And when, 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 when you're going to um, childbearing and delivery, mm. when they pull out a baby from you, mm -hmm. you will know. And, you know, I heard when my husband was talking with you, all my complaints to my husband before now, mm. that it's not one treat I'm getting, that babies are moving in my room, not just one, because I've had one, uh, I've had single babies, mm -hmm. three of them. Mm. And then my third child, when they were doing the operation, I, I felt when they pulled me, and when I lifted up my head, I saw the baby. Okay, so this time around, I, when they pulled the first baby, did you lift up your head and see? I lifted up my head, yes, I did. I did. Then I what happened next? They would show me the baby. Within me, I was expecting this. They should show me the sex of the baby. Hmm. But I didn't get anything. So I just, I still maintained. And then they made the second pull. I also lifted up my head and I, and I saw when they were building up the baby. So, I was now waiting for them to show me the two babies. One is one. And they didn't even show me the sex. It just, one of the, I don't know whether she then was, she was also in the operation room. She carried the baby from them and came to my cheek, side by side with my baby. Brought my baby's cheek side to my own. And Madame, see your baby. And they moved the baby out. The next thing I saw, why they were doing all these things? They were just talking 
she was from her boys themselves. So we didn't have said, I want to do it for not talking with me. Well, is it is it normal for them to be talking with you during the surgery? I don't know now. The no, I, no, I'm talking about in your former surgery when you had your other baby, were the staff talking to you? Were they having a conversation with you? Not that they were talking to me, but you you could hear everything they were doing. It's so transparent. Okay. We just we just between among themselves. Did you at any point hear any baby cry? The both of them did not even cry. The one they brought out did not even cry because they told my husband he had a, a issue with his health. He didn't cry. So it was when they went out, they, they took the baby out. Mm. And I heard, I don't know what they did to the baby, he cried a little one. So twice. But you felt two babies being pulled out of you? Yes. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. Yes. So I was surprised when they called him, my husband, and said, even before they called him, I know, it's one, oh, we just had two drama. Before, you know, my husband came in. Oh, that, this is practical. It's, it's one baby. It's not two, and they go. See? So my husband said, they asked him if he should, you know, they should continue with the two brain ligation. My husband said, oh, yes, they should. You know, at, 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 at some point in time, I wanted to talk. I don't know, I had a kind of restraint with him not to not to say anything. Even if in the theater in the theater could you talk? Yes, I there was a time I told the anesthetist that I cannot breathe. Okay. Nobody paid attention to me. And there were several movements. In the door I'm going out and it's not supposed to be because I have done an uh, operation before. Mm. And there were, like, there were eight of them inside there. All of them converged at, at my, my stomach side. So when I even complained that I could not even breathe, nobody heard me. Nobody said anything. Uh, can I find out from you when the last time was that they told you about um, the scan and what exactly uh, your scan showed? I, I, when, when was the last time they talked to you that you were carrying twins? Okay. Um, the last time they talked to me was... Uh, uh, at the state uh, field, when they showed me, when they were talking that the scan had any um, continuing tone. No, 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 I'm talking about before the delivery. Like, before we got into the theater, when was the last, what was the last thing that they said to you that made you very, very sure that you will come out of that theater with twins? Okay. Um, in the last uh, conversation we had with the doctor, that was before I entered the theater. Mm. Along the line, I was always coming to the hospital. They asked me to always come mm. for checkups because of my BP. Mm. So the very last time I came, I came with my husband. Mm -hmm. So I've been coming with him. Mm -hmm. On the very last day I came, mm -hmm. they, they, they booked me for uh, a admission. They told me that I had stomach um, gestation. And they asked my husband if he's aware that I'm carrying multiple pregnancy. So he said, yes, he is aware because we just let the scan in. So he said uh, that with my water level is low, mm -hmm. one of the two is sitting with the bottles and the other one is breached. Mm -hmm. So that we have to look before operation, mm -hmm. that it will be good to the society that the world we use okay. to push not to be sitting with a bottom, the bottom. So that was the last time before I entered into the theater. This was, so, to, to be clear, this was on the day that you were admitted into the hospital, yes? Yeah, before the day I was admitted, we had already talked about it. The okay. doctor reviewed from the scan results. Okay. And even before the scan result, they checked me. They've been checking me. Mm -hmm. They to see me. She checked me mm. with a bit device, which every pregnant woman should be conversant with. Yes. And I also had the heartbeat of the baby because the positioning of the baby is in my room. Mm -hmm. But the same position she also captured when she was checking me. So, when she checked the, the heartbeat, I heard it. 
she had it before she called the, the, the director. So there was no problem until uh, I came out from that place. Okay. Can you tell me if anything else has happened since the time that you uh, came to us on Nigeria Info? Uh, since the time I came, actually, nothing has happened. I was expecting, uh, I actually was told to go to the Nazis of Zonal Office in Port Harcourt. Mm -hmm. I did that. Mm -hmm. uh, then I was waiting to get any further development regarding the issue. Mm -hmm. Nobody has called me, the police or the lawyer. But yesterday, I called the lawyers and I told them I need to meet with them. What's the update? Mm. Uh, nobody has given me any update yet. Mm. I see. Is there anything else, uh, Mr. Karuna, that you'd like to let me know? From every indication and everything that has happened and transpired, and the way and manner they have kept this thing till now. Mm. I strongly believe, I strongly believe that they did something very, they did something and they took away that baby. Hmm. I strongly believe that. Because this is not the first pregnancy my wife is having. And I've been there with her all through her pregnancy. And when she told me that this is not just one, it's a twin pregnancy, I kept quiet, but I saw all the signs. I saw all the signs. And when it was time, they ran that scan. The scan actually was done at 36 weeks, five days. It was already 10. And I knew that there is no way the scan will make error at that point. I knew it. And the doctor went ahead and told us that because of the positioning of the babies, that it will not be good to wait for her to get into labor. And her labor was already very close at that time. So whatever Rebutal is making, a lot of lies I am dashed in it. I, I read somewhere in a blog, somebody brought my attention to a blog where he made some rebuttal. And I said, ah, these are all laced with lies. Hmm. He has not spoken to me before since we started this whole drama. But somebody just brought my attention after that broadcast in uh, Nigeria Info. Mm -hmm. Somebody brought my attention to a blog where some rebutals were made. Hmm. Even, though, even though at Nigeria Info, he declined comment. Mm -hmm. Because the reporter told me then, they went to him and he said, I was just out to tarnish his image and all that. You're talking about the hospital now and the doctor who did the surgery, yes? Yes. Okay. That was, he was telling, that was the reporter that went there. Mm. Initially told me, that the doctor says, I just want to tarnish his image. Hmm. And I said, for what? Do I know him from Adam? Why would I want to tarnish his image? I don't know him. What did, he say, what did he say in the post that you read, in the rebuttal you read? What did he say? I will send you the link because I tried to get down to it. Who, who's, who wrote that? I couldn't get to whoever did that. Did that. Okay. Now, I have a, I have a question. I have a question. Um, I spoke to a few um, um, doctors on the show, and they said that um, it's possible that the hospital made a mistake. It's possible that this is not a case of a stolen baby, that this is a case of a radiologist making a mistake because the scan was done so late in the pregnancy. And the doctors did not do their diligence to confirm, and that's why when they got in there, uh, they saw only one baby. What do you say to that? That, that possibility, I, 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 I find it very, very funny. You know why? Why? Because, number one, 
when the surgery was done, I wasn't in the theater. When they called me in, they said it's only one baby. Now, I didn't argue with them. I told them to go ahead, seal the tubes, and then that was all. Mm. So they could take care of her quickly, mm. which they did. Now, when she was strong enough, mm. she asked me, where are the babies? And I told her, they said it's only one. She said no. She now narrated the ordeal she went through in the theater. By the time she narrated everything that transpired in the theater, it was too obvious that something was wrong. At that point, me, I was, I was going up and down because the baby was referred to a pediatric hospital. Mm. So I wasn't stationed in the clinic. So I was going to where the baby was and also coming to check on her. Okay. What I want to find out is um, what you intend to do next. Because my station has reached out to the police. The police has um, um, told us um, that they have no further information for us. We reached out to NAPTIP. NAPTIP um, has also said um, that they have no further information for us. And the hospital itself is refusing to give an official statement, make official comment. So can, can I find out what your next step is? Personally, I have, uh, I have spoken with uh, the hospital. Mm. I have told them to release the scan result, release the baby that they have taken. Secondly, that was what led me to going to the police and seeking regrets in a lawful and legal way. Hmm. I have been following this up from the day these whole things started. Yeah. Uh, what the police has always told me was to maintain status quo, that they are still investigating. If at this point that it has gotten to the public and the police are still uh, declining further comments, I believe they are doing their own work. And uh, if other agencies are declining for that comment, I also believe they are doing their work. But what do I want? It's very simple. I want justice to be done. And I want the baby recovered. That is all. Okay. How that will be done is left... Because I don't have the... I've just left it in the hands of time and also in the hands of the law to take care of this. Let the right thing be done. Let the right thing be done. Let the right thing be done. That's all I have to say. Okay, sir. And I, I believe posterity will be kind to me for speaking out. Okay, sir. Because this is evil. I know it's evil. Posterity will be kind to me. Let the right thing be done. Lisa Karuna, thank you so much for talking to us on Nigeria Info. Thank you. And there you've heard from the couple yet again. And now I want to hear from mothers. If you are a mother, if you're a mother who gave birth by caesarean section, I want to hear from you. Now, some of my friends who have done CS under local anesthetic tell me that they can feel when the baby is pulled out. It's not painful, but they can feel the tugging and the yanking. So first of all, I want to know if you felt the same thing. For the moms who did CS, call me via WhatsApp. WhatsApp is 080 nine five nine seven five eight two five moms only don't screen a call nata i'm just taking whatsapp calls from moms except of course you find a woman on the phone lines so yeah if you are a mom and you're a mom who has done cs can you relate to that conversation and then for the experts because as a mother you are an expert on childbirth and child delivery can you relate to what she's saying? 
She's saying that she felt them pull out two babies, one after the other. She's saying that this wasn't her first CS, so she knows what it feels like. So you women who have done CS, does this make sense to you? Ngozi is in Aja. She's also done CS. Ngozi, thank you for calling us. Hello, Sandra. Good evening. Good evening. The story of the woman is quite uh, pathetic. But I want you to know from the question you asked. Mm. I had three kids. Okay. And three of them was through elective CS. Mm -hmm. And I must tell you that each and every one of them, I'm 100% awake. I knew everything. In fact, I was busy interacting with my doctor that uh, carried on the, the cesarean section. Okay. So I was 100% alert. The only thing you don't feel from your womb down to your legs are quite ready. Mm. So you cannot feel anything from those edges. But for every other thing about me, I was 100% okay. I could talk, I was interacting. A lot of even what I was saying to you today, mm. when I see the doctor, we still laugh over them when we are talking. <laughs> okay. Because they actually want you to be awake, you know, mm. talking. So it, it, it is normal. Even when the baby comes out, they will know. Mm. This even made me my last baby. I took their permission and I did everything. Mm. From the beginning of the delivery, I gave them my, my pad and they did everything for me. I'm still with it. Mm. So I think this is an eye-opener for parents that the husband should try and go into labor room with their wife. Hmm. No matter what the hospital says, he insists, is your right. You have every right to be there if you wish to. Hmm. So that is the only thing I have to say. All right, Ngozi, thank you for calling to say it. If you are a mom, I want to hear from you. We've got uh, somebody calling us via WhatsApp. Hello. Hello. Hello? Hello, Sandra. Good evening. Good evening. What's your name? Hello, Sandra. Good evening. My name is Odion. I'm calling from Magboro. Welcome, Odion. Hello? Okay. Um, yes, the woman, Mrs. Karuna, she did not lie. And the first caller that just uh, spoke with you, she also did not lie. During CS, the mother is always awake. And once the baby is pulled out, you must know. You must feel it. The doctor's hospital in Port Harcourt are lying. They should give that woman her baby. So painful. Listening to the story, my God. It's so, so painful, Sandra. Yeah. It's so, so painful. No matter how the CS is, that woman will be awake. With, in my own case, I felt everything. Even the doctor, when, when they were cutting me, I tweeted uh, my feet. There was a way I did my legs. Mm. And the, the female doctor asked me, Madam, are you feeling the pain? I said, yes. Mm. I felt everything. I saw everything. Mm. And when they uh, brought out my baby, mm. she asked me, Madam, what is the sex of your baby? Mm. And I told her, it's a boy. Mm. She asked me that question three times, mm. and she now turned my baby to face me, mm. and I saw that yes, indeed, uh, it, it was a boy, mm. and oh, it's a boy, mm. and they took my baby out. So I, it was even when they were sewing, mm. cleaning me up. That was when I dozed off. Okay. It's so it's so pathetic. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for calling to share your story with me. I appreciate you trusting me with your story. Uh, let's talk to more people. Only women calling me on WhatsApp. Only women. Hello. Hello. Um, how are you? Hello. Hello. I can hear you. Hi. Hello. Ah, good evening. Good evening. Okay. Um, yeah, I am a mom. I've mm. had um, my baby's through CS twice. Okay. And now I know that for a fact, when the baby is being pulled out, mm. you would feel, you know, that your baby is coming out. Okay. And then if they show you the sex again. Okay. But where I find a little bit um, faulty or maybe a puncture in her story is mm. the fact that she said she raised up her body to see the baby come out. Mm. You've been given something on your spine. Mm. So from your neck down, is dead. Mm. You can turn left and right. Okay. You can see who's by your side. But trust me, madam, you cannot raise up your body mm. to see because it's completely dead, okay. even though you're awake. Okay. I know I'm a, I'm a mother, I'm a woman, I'm supposed to be feeling what she's feeling. Oh, yes, I am. But mm. then again, mm. let the hospital come out to tell us what really happened. Okay. 
from her story, yes, she felt when the baby came out, mm. but that part where she said she raised up to see the baby she raised up is her where head. I find a bit um her head. Mm. You know, you know, they give you they give you the injection on your your spine, your spine so it yeah. kills from your neck down. Mm. Yeah, so you can turn your head left and right, but trust me, at that moment you cannot raise up your body. You cannot. Okay. I don't believe that part of the story. Thank you. All right, thank you for calling. I appreciate it, Lagos. We're going to take a few more calls, but we need to take a break. You're listening to Hard Facts on ninety nine point three Nigeria Info. I am Sandra Ezekwesili. How easy is it for a hospital to steal a newborn? We're discussing a story coming out of Port Harcourt. I'll tell you about it again after the break. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk. Welcome back to Hard Facts with Sandra Ezekwisi. Before you call me, let me give you some airtime for you to do just that. Uh, Night Mobile knows that you love to call Nigeria Info and talk. So they're trying to ensure that you can keep on talking. 5230 Four six eight one seven five two three zero one nine 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 four six eight one seven. All right, if you have really fast fingers, the next one is for you one eight three six one seven zero one seven six. Four two one one six. Don't forget, if you win, you need to get in touch with us via Twitter or WhatsApp or Facebook and tell us that you won, okay? WhatsApp is 080-959-75805. Again, that recharge from 9 Mobile is 18361707. One one six. The final pin, the final recharge pin from Nine Mobile. Thank you, Nine Mobile, for ensuring that Lagos can talk to Sandra Ezekwesili on hard facts. Six three nine one seven six 
787-346-785. Congratulations to all the winners of these recharge cards on today's show. Congrats, congrats, congrats. Now let's get back to the conversation that we've been having since 4 p.m. What do you think of everything you have heard in this story? First of all, I played you the interview that they granted our station in Port Harcourt, 92.3 Nigeria Info in Port Harcourt. And then I played you an interview uh, with a medical expert, and you heard what he had to say. And then I got in touch with a couple to ask for an update, and I also played that interview for you. So three power-packed conversations that you've heard this evening. What do you make of what you've heard? 0700-993-993-993. Who do you believe in this story? Uh, we've got Tunde on WhatsApp who says there should be a way or a post-delivery test that should be able to reveal and clear this dispute in this modern age. Um, you know what? The father, uh, Mr. Caleb uh, Karuna, told me that um, he asked a medical doctor friend if there was any other way that it can be confirmed post-delivery that it was a twin. And the doctor asked him if there was a placenta. Where is the placenta? And then Mr. Caleb, the parent who's alleging that his twin was stolen, said that um, the hospital disposed of the placenta without their consent, neither him or his wife. And till date, the hospital has not given them a copy of the scan, but they've given it to the police. Police confirms that what was in the scan report is twin gestation of the, at 36 weeks, five days. But police is refusing to hand over to the couple until today. Their position is that they're still investigating and so the couple should maintain status quo. And this thing has been going, off, going on for more than two months now. We've got Paul in a weather on the line. Hello, Paul. All right, Paul is not there anymore. 99.3. Sorry about that. Hello. 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 Good evening. Good evening. What's your name? Yeah, my name is Ruben from Yaba. Ruben from Yaba. Welcome. Go ahead. Hello. Oh, sorry about that. 99.3. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. Good evening. Good evening. What's your name? My name is Chinedu Kelvin. I'm coming, calling you from Ichibo. Welcome, Chinedu Kelvin. Go ahead. Yeah, I heard the story, and um, it's so pathetic to know that such a thing still exists in Nigeria. Still exists? Thought, yes, so pathetic. Um, the man really acted well for him to have, you know, to be calm a little bit, to have allowed his wife to undergo the operation and, you know, the whole process of trying to save her. But I feel that we should go for that because I know that there is no way a woman will be pregnant and she won't be able to know that she's carrying two babies. Because when my wife was pregnant too, she also experienced such a thing. So I believe that we should, um, you know, we should look into that and then keep pressing buttons, even if it means, you know, going extra mile, you know, for everything to come out into light, you know. So I just feel that you know, right. something should be done urgently. So that's my take on it. Thank you for calling to share your your take with me. Um, I appreciate it. Let's go back to WhatsApp where we have a number of calls coming in. Hello. Oh, Sandra, I'm so favored that he picked up this call. <laughs> Hello, welcome. I've been dying to contribute, Sandra. Go ahead. There are a lot of red flags, Sandra. Hmm. I just had a baby. My baby is, uh, this is my third child. My, child, my baby is uh, about four months plus, and she, I had her two CS. Okay. So the first thing is, I know a caller said, oh, you take an injection, you can't raise your head. I did just that. Hmm. I did just that. Yeah, I raised my head. So you've been immobilized from your neck down. Doesn't mean you can't move your head. Hmm. I, I was talking, conversing with them. Hmm. And the thing they say you can if the mother says she felt two children coming out, she did have, have two children. Because you don't feel the pain. You're immobilized not to you're, you're immune to pain. Hmm. But you 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 can actually feel the movement. When the doctor's hand is swiping through your abdomen, swiping through your womb to evacuate the blood. 
you can feel every part of it, but you're immune to pain. Mm. So if she felt so triggered and the scan, I know that when you have a scan and you're going to give birth, right? Mm. You can have a scan and say it's one child mm -hmm. and then be surprised to meet two children. Mm -hmm. But it's extremely rare. I, I think I, I need to be proven on by a doctor to see two children just before you go into the series because they do that to know the position of these children mm. before they go and do the to cut off the womb and, and the stomach and get all the way to the third section. I think there are three layers mm -hmm. to get down to the womb. Mm -hmm. But it's very difficult to see two and meet one. And then there's a very big red flag. How can you say you dispose of a placenta without the consent of the mother? It's never done. They, they always come to you and say, here is your placenta. What do we do with it? Mm. You either say dispose it or, in my case, I had to wait. I waited, I waited, and we took it to the church, prayed about it, and we disposed of it in the, in the, in the religious world, according to my church doctrine. Mm. Right, that's my decision. Mm. But it's very difficult to dispose a placenta, which is the only proof to go forward and do further analysis to find out if there were two children, mm. two fetus feeding from this placenta. Mm. So the hospital is extremely guilty. It's not for anything for disposing the placenta without the consent of the mother. Mm. And I did raise my head. So when I, was, I was dying to call in mm. to say you can actually move your head to see your child. Mm. There was an opening. Were, I was covered. Yes, there was an opening. Mm. So I, I was monitoring everything that was happening. I didn't, I refused to sleep because I was afraid. Mm. I refused. That was my first years. I've had much children. Mm. I moved my head to see. And when my child came out, they didn't bring my child immediately to me. But I saw the child coming out. But it was, they were killing the child right in the same room. There's mm. a way. Hello? The child went away. So it's possible to look and to see. Okay. All right. It's possible to look and to see, she says. Thank you for calling to uh, share that with us. We'll take yet another call on WhatsApp. I love that mothers are calling me. Hello. Hello, hello, Sandra. I can hello. see your baby's leg. <laughs> <laughs> I have been dying to call. Like, I have really been dying to call. My name is Nilo. Hi, Nilo. And I'm calling from Surulere. Welcome. The other, um, this lady that just went off the call has said exactly everything I wanted to say. Okay. It is very possible to move your head while you're in, while you have been sedated, while you're under, um, um, what's it called, anesthesia, anesthesia. Mm. to see your baby. Mm. In fact, it is almost, it's almost natural. It, you're so afraid to cross over to the other side. As I used to say, you don't want to sleep in the hospital and wake up in heaven. <laughs> so you don't even want to sleep. Mm. Your eyes are open. You are aware about everything that is happening. Mm. So they're saying, oh, it's just one child. You two should just go and they should, they should give her a baby because it is possible to have reset your head. You would even be waiting to hear when your baby cries. Mm. You're asking them, my baby has not cried. Is everything okay? Mm. So even if the baby does not cry, she would have felt when they brought out one, mm -hmm. they brought out two, mm -hmm. and they removed the placenta. The placenta is always the last thing they remove. Mm -hmm. So they're saying it, it's just one child. They, they, there's foul play somewhere. Can there I, is foul play. Let, let and then disposing let me, that placenta. Mm -hmm. Go yeah. ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, that, them disposing that placenta, they knew that would have been a sure way to find out. I was given my placenta mm. when I put to bed. Mm. I didn't even know what to do with it because I was like, okay, what do I do? Now my husband was confused. I was like, okay, we'll look for a way to dispose of this thing later on. Okay. And it was, I was in the hospital for about, I think, four days. Okay. And it was with me all this while mm. until we left and had to dispose of it somewhere. Yeah. So it is it is true. Even especially in general hospitals or Hospitals generally, they give you your placenta. They even say, oh, I do not know what to do with it. They will dispose of it as medical waste. They mm. know how they take care of this thing. But they are under no, under, under no mandate to dispose of a baby's placenta for the parents. It is not done anywhere. Let me no, ask, they will let, let me show ask you this. Best. Let me ask this, yes. The, the way a baby feels coming out, is that the same way a placenta feels coming out? Because some people have suggested that perhaps what she felt the second time was the placenta and not a second baby. The placenta feels the same way coming out. Hmm. It, feels, it feels like a baby, but without as much um, stress. I see. Because with the baby, you're trying to make sure, okay, all the extremities are coming out easily mm -hmm. there's extra care but it doesn't like it's just like a bag and yeah. they are taking care to remove it from the walls of the um uterus of the womb yes 
yeah. yeah. So the second care to remove from the walls of the womb as well. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they even go ahead, finish doing everything mm-hmm. before they now come back to remove the placenta because the baby is top priority. That's right. That's right. So after they finish doing everything, they say the baby is fine. Mm-hmm. Then they come back and start evacuating placenta and doing every other thing that and closing up the woman. So you would know. You would know if you brought if See, this we should bring this woman's baby, please. I, I'm feeling so extra about this because I have not heard something like this happen. I know there's still people's babies. They say, oh, it has died or something. But this one is now stealing from the womb. But I call people need to be very careful. All there's right. so much news coming out from there. They need to be very careful. Thank you. Thank you, Nello, for calling us. We appreciate it. You and your cute baby. Okay, Lagos, uh, let's uh, take a few more calls. One more here on WhatsApp. Yes, I'm giving women preference today. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. What's your Good name? Evening. I'm Mrs. Sola Romola. Welcome to the show. Go ahead. Hello. All right. Thank you. Even though I've not had uh, my baby through any of my babies through um, CS, mm. but as a mother, even as a grandmother, I know that when a woman gives birth, the placenta are just like every other person spoke. I mean, that has spoken has said rightly. The placenta should be given to the parents. In fact, they will ask you, what do you want us to do with the placenta? Are you willing to take it away? Or you want us to dispose of it? And then whichever one you want them to do, they will consent to that. Mm. So for them to have posed the placenta without their consent mm. means a lot I mean, has happened. So they should please press button. And let us know the truth. Nigerians want to know the truth. A lot of things are be happening concerning such things like this. Mm. This and they must be put to the. And then again, I want to advise the man and mm. I mean the parents that they should be prayerful about it. Mm. Whatever that is hidden, God will reveal to them. And that the case shouldn't be treated as if that they, they don't have um a kind of a uh, let me just say backbone mm. or somebody that will speak for them mm. but let them believe that god has the final authority to give mm. and concerning this case he will reveal and shed light more on it so that there will be revelation about it and those people that are behind it will be exposed so let them just be prayerful about it and i know that uh, when many nigerians even the authority the the the, the, the police uh, the the people in the police force they should rise to this uh, parents sick and then help them out with this case so that the truth will be known to everybody so that is just my take about it thank you so much for calling to share um, your your take with us grandma uh we've got more people calling in 99.3 hello hello president sandra good afternoon good afternoon what's your name my name is Afiz Bredo. I'm calling from CGC. Welcome, Afiz. What do you think of this story? I think that the man and his wife, they shouldn't have gone ahead with the operation in the first instance. Hmm. And this is why. If they had told you that there was twins in your woman's belly, and then the next thing they come out say that they can't release the scan results, so why, why would you have to go ahead with the operation? Why did they have to do it? That has gone past, but I just think that the hospital is keeping something. They have something to hide. It's very certain. It's very, very certain, very obvious. I don't know what they can do to it, but I think that they shouldn't have gone with the hospital in the first instance. They shouldn't have. Okay. Since they have refused to provide this scan results, mm. which yeah, my, my wife is pregnant, mm. and the first time we went for scan, mm. we didn't even ask for the scan results. They gave it to us on the immediate. Mm. In Lagos, said they give it to us on the immediate. So why would you say that? They said that it will be in your file, and then afterwards they can't find it anymore. Hmm. Something is fishy, man. Something is fishy. All right. Something. Well, th- yeah. thank you for calling me, Afiz from VGC. We've got uh, Okusaga on Twitter who says, "Sandra, it's annoying to know that this issue has been on for two months. What has the police been up to for two months? How can they dispose of the placenta without them knowing?" We've got Dominion who says, The hospital gave me the placenta for my three children and I disposed of them myself. That hospital is hiding something. I believe they sold that woman's baby. 
Baby factory is a thing of concern in the Port Aba axis. This is a big menace in the southeast. We've got uh, more comments here. Uh, Dekpo Juabdu Wahid says, My take is simply that this is a case of a stolen baby by the hospital. Why would they dispose of the placenta without the consent of their parents and not presenting the scan results? We've got Abu Aya who says, That's why they've been turning him around. I would like him to take it up to TV stations and make this a trending case on Nigeria's social media. I'm sure the doctor will come out with the truth. We've got uh, Greater Higo. Oh, no, that's football story. Uh, somebody else says, um, uh, I think we need to delve more into this issue. I've heard stories about this, but I don't know if, those, if the information is correct or just based on thoughts. We need to hear from all sides of the, cons of the coin, just a concerned health worker. Well, the, the hospital is refusing to make an official statement. The doctor has refused to speak to our team in Port Harcourt. Uh, we have some unsubstantiated reports from a blog uh, that um, uh, Mr. Caleb talked about during our interview with him, but we cannot share that report because we have no way of confirming uh, whether or not it came from the hospital or from the doctor who performed the surgery one way or the other. Uh, the police has said they're still investigating. NAPTIP is also on the matter they're investigating. And so we'll all, all we can do is keep our eye on this story and talk about it uh, as much as we can. James Darwin is in Ajawo Estate. Hello, James. Oh, Sandra, I don't finish my credit. Sorry. <laughs> you for win fastest with fingers now. <laughs> no, no, be nine mumba fans. Though. See? Okay. Um, let me say this first. First, the first time my wife was pregnant, hmm. and that's her first time, and she's very nervous for this. I didn't, this, I never expected that she would, that God would give him that knowledge of how to know how baby is working. I this, my wife was just like disturbing me. Baby is working here. Baby is working here. Mm -hmm. Look here, you see it, you see it. <laughs> so, if a woman said that she, uh, she. Uh, she saw, as in, she noticed two uh, baby inside our room. Mm. Sandra, please believe that person. This is my uh, my, uh, my first uh, child. My second one, mm. he did this. She did the same thing. Mm -hmm. And when they are giving, uh, they, uh, they give birth. Mm. The the doctor was like, guys, uh, take your placenta. I said, please, you people. He said, no, this is. Your number one priority. Your pro, your don't, don't don't dispose it anyhow. Don't give it to anybody. Mm. Dispose it yourself. Very secret place. I didn't dispose it. Don't let anybody to see this thing. Mm. As in, they were warning me for my for for that placenta. So mm. if those hospitals did something like that, mm. they should hold that res uh, hospital responsible All for right. that. Yeah, that baby is alive. They should go and find means of bringing that back that baby. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, James Darwing, for calling us. We've got a message from Nancy in Iju, Lagos. And Nancy says that uh, the hospital has entered one chance. Let that family go on with the case. And this case has exposed the doctor and his team. All right, Nancy, thank you for sending that message to us. Now, let me give you a chance to win 10,000 naira on today's show. Huh? Uh, all you need to do is call me, answer as many questions as possible from today's show in one minute. That's it. Once you call me, you answer as many questions as possible, you win. That's how uh, Just a Minute works. 10,000 are up for grabs right now. This is Just a Minute. Just a Minute on 99.3 Nigeria Info. So the score that you have to beat is three. If you can answer more than three questions, you are the winner or else the person who called into the morning show today will be our winner for today. I love Nigeria Info, hard facts, especially we're always giving away stuff. I love giving away stuff to you. 0700-993-993-993. 0700-993-993-993. Oh, 0700 Nine nine three nine nine three nine nine three. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Yeah. Good evening, Sandra. What's your name? Uh, my name is Mr. Lemmy. Say that again. Mr. Lemmy. Lemmy. Lemmy is my name. Mr. Lemmy. 
Yes, from Ijegun. All right, Mr. Lemming, your time starts now. Okay. This is just a minute. What farm animal is being put on a diet all over Nigeria? Chicken, chicken. What chicken, crop chicken. is a key ingredient in chicken feed? Corn, corn, key in, ingredient. In our 60 years of independence, how many years has Nigeria not been self-sufficient in maize? For three years. Name one of the two factors causing the recent drop in maize production. One is the crisis in the northern areas of Benue, with the henchmen going to farm, people not going to farm. And then a drop in uh, drought and preservation. Ah. Uh, which telco is providing free recharge vouchers on hard facts? Nine mobile phone. Which newspaper is Femi Fani Kayode threatening to sue? Uh, Your time is up. Yes, please. Your time is up. So let's see. You got one, two, three, four questions correctly. Congratulations, sir. You are our winner for today. Stay on the line. Thank you. Don't hang up. Stay on the line so that uh, uh, Nata can get your call and ensure that you get your prize. Lagos, today has been real. Thank you so much for joining the conversation uh, with us right here. Or 99.3 Nigeria info. Somebody says a placenta feels like a sweeping with hands while a baby is removal, like dragging something out. Okay, I guess to answer my question about does it feel the same, a placenta being removed and um, uh, what's it called now? A baby being pulled out during a caesarean operas- operation. We'll keep our eye on this story. The more we know, the more you will know as well. Thanks for trying to get in- into the conversation, trying to contribute, trying to call, sending us messages. Thank you again to Nine Mobile for ensuring that people can call into hard facts. And uh, thank you to everybody who made today's show possible. Um, I am Sandra Ezekwesili on all of my social media handles. Tomorrow at 5 p.m., Let's talk about some house helps who try to poison their bosses. Yes. Tomorrow, 5 p.m., between 5 and 6, I'm going to play you a confession tape of sorts of a house help that tried to poison his boss because he lost money. Yeah, it shocked me when I heard it. And it's probably going to shock you as well. So tomorrow, keep a date with me at uh, 5 p.m. That's when that conversation comes your way. But even before the big hard fact, we have so much going on on hard facts. It starts at 3 every day and it ends at 7. Coming up is uh, the news at 6. And then let's talk from Voice of America. I am Sandra Ezekwesili on all social media platforms. S. Ezekwesili on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Those were your hard facts, Digos. <laughs> Good night. It's okay, that is okay. It's okay. No, it's okay. Let me explain. It's okay. It's okay. She she off your mic over the side. On 99.3 Nigeria Info. Your mic is always on. Let's talk.
the conversation. We black people must understand what is really going on. Import, import, import milk, sugar, toothpicks, toothpaste, handkerchief, pencil. We don't make. Presenting the facts and access to pour out your mind. There are more good Nigerian doctors in LA than in the entire country of Nigeria. So let's be serious here. We bring the experts on political and economic issues. Every time you bring in a shipload of rice, you also bring in a shipload of unemployment because you are transferring your wealth to sustain other economies. So let's look at an Africa that must be free to take care of herself, an Africa that's free from exploitation in broad daylight. They need jobs. They are children. They've graduated. They've come back home to begin a second child because there's no factory to employ them. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk. I'm a radio presenter. My work is to point you in directions that say, hey, look there. What if we went there without actually saying it? Joyce, Joyce on the sunny side. I think we have our system and we're not using it. I mean, we blame the system, but to the degree to which the system can work for us, we have not stretched the system to that degree. Are you willing to petition them? If you leave it on conversation, it's never really going to go beyond that and nothing better can happen. Join the conversation every weekday, 12 noon to 3 p.m. Right here on your number one station for talk, 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk. It's six.